Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers IS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 21st December 2018. The first issue in news is regarding a proposal made by the government in the parliament for an additional sum of rupees 41,000 crore in order to recapitalize the public sector banks. This is over and above the already budgeted expenditure of rupees 65,000 crores in the total recapitalization package which would now stand at 1,6,000 crores. The government said that the recognition of loans that are non-performing assets was nearly complete and the recovery process was progressing strongly. What is to be noted here is, the government had announced a rupees 2.11 lakh crore recapitalization plan for the public sector entities of which 1.35 lakh crores was to be raised through recapitalization bonds and the remaining was to be raised either through the market or the sale of non-core assets. The current demand for greater funds has been aimed at four broad categories. Firstly, it is to help the banks meet the regulatory capital norms. The second is aimed at helping banks which are currently under the prompt corrective action framework. The third category of banks which are to receive capital would be the non-PCA banks that are in the danger of crossing the threshold into the PCA framework. And finally, the fourth category would be to provide regulatory and growth capital to the banks that are undergoing mergers such as the Vijaya Bank, Dena Bank, the Bank of Baroda, etc. The next issue news is regarding the Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram which was so far known as the Multi-Sectoral Development Program. The Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karyakram is an area development program which is implemented in the minority concentration areas for the remaining period of the 14th Finance Commission. The minority concentration areas are relatively backward areas having substantial population of the minority communities as identified under the Census 2011 data. The objective of the scheme is to bring the identified areas at par with the national average by providing infrastructure related to education, skill, health and other related sectors and thereby make the assets available to the entire population in the area. The next issue in news is an editorial regarding the recent release of Mr. Hamid Nihal Ansari who was sentenced to three years in prison by the Pakistani authorities on charges of espionage. In this regard, the Ministry of External Affairs has to be credited for its sustained diplomatic pressure for a fair trial and consular access and also the government of Pakistan must also be commended for Mr. Ansari's release. Above all, the citizens group in both the countries, particularly the lawyers and human rights activists who work to ensure Mr. Ansari's release deserve credit. This is because given the downturn in bilateral relations between India and Pakistan and previous experience like the conviction of Kulbush and Jadav, instances of prisoners like Sarabjit Singh who died in the Pakistani jail, it is nothing short of a miracle that Mr. Ansari has been released and has returned home. Going forward, the two countries should adopt a more humane approach to each other prisoners and dedicate themselves to freeing hundreds of other prisoners among whom are a large number of fishermen who have unknowingly trespassed into each other's waters. In this regard, the two countries must revive the biannual meetings of the Joint Judicial Committee on Prisoners which has not met since 2013 and must also consider its recommendations that women, children as well as prisoners with mental health issues should be sent back to their home countries on humanitarian grounds. This is because there is little to be gained by holding these prisoners hostage to the bitter bilateral ties, and a more human approach is needed to end the misery of their impoverished families. On that note, let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding China's investment in Pakistan. Earlier this year, the US president had suspended the billions of dollars aid to Pakistan with hope that Pakistan would better cooperate with US and its allies. But in reality, Pakistan found a replacement sponsor in China and its One Belt One Road initiative. As per a confidential plan which was recently reviewed by the New York Times, the two countries are deepening cooperation in the areas of space, military along with economic cooperation as part of China's Belt and Road initiative. 
Chinese officials have repeatedly said that the Belt and Road is purely an economic project, but with its plan for Pakistan, China for the first time has explicitly revealed its military ambitions. The various facets of these relations include the Pakistani port of Gwadar, which has been developed by China as a seaport and a special economic zone, thereby giving China a quicker route to get its goods to the Arabian Sea as well as protect its strategic interests in the region. Military analysts predict that China could use the Gwadar port to expand its naval footprint of attack submarines and thereby extend its navy's global reach. Along with this, one of the components of the Belt and Road Initiative is the central road Pakistan plays in China's Bidu satellite navigation system as Pakistan is the only other country that has been granted access to the system's military services. This will allow Pakistan a more precise guidance for its missiles, ships and aircraft. Further, according to an undisclosed proposal, the two countries have agreed upon developing an SEZ under the CPEC in order to produce a new generation of fighter jets and also joint manufacture of navigation systems, radar systems and onboard weapons. This would expand China and Pakistan's current cooperation on the JF-17 fighter jet which is seen as an alternative to the US built F-16 fighters. This is a very important issue and a question has already been asked on the same in the mains examination. But what is more important is, this is the first time a clear military angle has been attached to the CPEC project which is a significant threat to India's security. Therefore, go through the issue thoroughly. On that note, I'm wrapping up today's news analysis. Do like, share and comment to support this initiative. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.